In this series, I'll walk you through how to use Cogito to make your game. If you haven't heard of Cogito, it is a free Godot engine project template that enables you to make first person adventures, shooters, and immersive sim type games. Each video that I make will cover one topic, so you can watch them in any order. Though if you're new to Cogito, I recommend you start at the first one. In this video, I'm using some assets made by Loaf BRR, or as I'd like to pronounce it, Loaf Brr. They make great assets for Godot, and a lot of them are free, so check them out via the link in the description. They didn't pay me to say this, but I just like their assets, and I wanted to give them a shout out. Alright, so let's get started. So in the last video, we set up our Cogito turn wheel, but we haven't hooked it up to any of the other nodes. We're not controlling anything with it. So in this video, I'll show you how to make a small custom script that is attached to our smoke particles so we can use Cogito objects to control them. One quick thing for our smoke is that just changing the visibility will not 100% work for what we want our behavior to be. Um, so if I'm in my pack scene right now for the smoke and I just change the visibility here, you'll notice that it just, you know, abruptly appears and disappears. And it would be so much nicer if I could just have the emission stop, basically turning the emission off. And you can see how it slowly kind of disperses and it looks just way nicer. And the other thing is that changing the visibility actually won't stop our audio stream player. Um, that will just keep playing the sound and that obviously won't work for our purposes either. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to quickly show how to make a very small and easy script that will control those two things. And at the same time, will hook into Cogito's systems. I'm gonna make sure my smoke root node is selected. And then under script, I'll just quickly go new script. This can just be like a node 3D script and um, I'm gonna make sure it's the smoke behavior, behavior um, script. That's that's good enough for a name. I'm gonna get rid of those functions, and first I want the references to my two nodes. Oops, I'm gonna do it like this. Bring this over. There we go. And I'm gonna need this too because I want to control this behavior, right? And then lastly, I'm gonna add another variable and it's gonna be a bool and I'm gonna call this is active. This one is gonna start as true because our smoke will start as being active. Um, and then I'm also going to export it in case I want to have smoke that maybe is not active when it starts and I want to activate it at runtime. Um, just checking that it appears. Yep, this looks good. And now finally, all we need is one function. I will call this the interact function. Func interact. And this one gets past the player interaction component. And I'm gonna type this. So this interact function is the default function that other Cogito objects call when they interact with other nodes. So if I actually hook this node up to, let's say a Cogito switch, a Cogito button, Cogito turn wheel, it will always try to call this function and it will always pass a player interaction component. You don't have to use it, but you wanna make sure you declare it so there are no errors. What do I want this function to actually do? I want this function to check if our smoke pack scene is active. And if it is active, I want it to turn off. And if it is not active, I want it to turn on. Our first if 
just checking the active state. And if it is true, we're gonna want our smoke particles and our audio stream to deactivate, to stop. So I will just reference the particles, check for is emitting or what is it? Emitting, there we go. And I'm gonna set this to false. And then I'll do audio stream player and I'll just call stop. That's all I need to do. Now, if is active is false or just the else condition in this case, I'll do the opposite. So I'll just copy and paste these and I'll set emitting to true. And instead of stop, I'll call play. And one more thing that I almost forgot is, of course, I want to change the active state. So once I've turned everything off, I want to make sure that is active gets changed to false. Once I have turned everything back on, is active should be set to true. And then make sure I can turn this on and off again. So going back to our scene, I can use my valve and where it says nodes to trigger, I will now hook up my smoke and also my hazard zone because the hazard zone has a similar function, works exactly the same way. And that should be all I need to do. So let's run. So here you can see I walk in, I get hurt and the steam is running. I go to my wheel. Suddenly the sound stops. I open it. I don't get hurt. There's no more particles. Go back out. Turn. Everything comes back. There we go. So I know this was a big video, but I hope you realize that by combining Kogito objects with other Kogito objects and also hooking it up to your own scripts, you can create any kind of scenarios and interactive objects that you can think of. Some of you probably noticed this little thing here. Um, for the next video, we're gonna look at items and I'm gonna walk you through how to turn this little capsule into a medipack that the player can use to recover some health.